Hello, my name is Seth Myers and I'm a certified consultant for tag management. Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to quickly create an owner change order in Sage 300 CRE's project management module. So I often get a question, how do I quickly add an owner change order? For example, I have a $10,000 change order and it's going to cost me $7,500. You know that your costs are broken down between demolition about $5,000, excavation, about $1,500, and asphalt paving for $1,000. So I have a total change order of $7,500, and we're going to charge our customer $10,000 for it. So the first thing that you need to figure out is, do you create change requests? And if so, do you need to link multiple change requests to a change order, or are we just going to create a change order on the fly? The first thing to do is to get into the change management process through contract control and then change orders. When the window opens, note that you'll see all of your prior change orders for the particular job that you're looking at. Once you find your job, click on the new button. Once the change order screen opens, type in a description that makes sense, update the date, and any other field that might be important to you such as the schedule impact. As you tab through the fields, you can change the values. For example, in this case, I want to change my accounting date to be the end of this month. I may say that this particular change order is going to impact the job completion by four days. I know that this change order is approved, so I'm going to go ahead and leave the status as approved. And I also know that I'm going to bill my customer for this so I'll keep the revised contract amount checkbox checked. You can select existing change requests, but we're all going to expedite this change order process by clicking on the new change request button. We'll enter a short description for later reference on our change request log and a short scope just explaining what the work is. In this case, we're going to modify our driveway. In reviewing the detail tab down at the bottom of the screen, all of the fields that we see are essentially extra and they're used for reporting purposes. Some people will change the names of these fields and put these on their change request forms. For us today, we're just going to go ahead and skip this. The next tab is your price cost estimate tab. In reviewing the detail tab, all of the fields are essentially extra and can be used for reporting purposes. Some people will change the names of the fields and then put these fields on their change request forms. By default, you will start on the price tab. This involves the price that you're going to charge your customer. Remember, you can turn on or off certain columns in each of these grids, but they're user specific. So if you add a column, then your coworker may need to do the same thing on their machine. Also, note that your pricing method can be either a lump sum change request or a time and material change request. Select the contract item that you're going to build for your customer and then fill in each of the applicable columns. In this case, we're going to charge $7,500 in labor and $2,500 in materials. You'll notice that as you fill in each of these columns on the right side, your total price column increases. In this case, we've got our $10,000. Also, once you tab off of each line, down below in the markup and add-ons, you'll notice that the price base will also increase. You'll want to make sure that you choose a contract item for each markup and add-on if you actually use those. In my case, notice that I've got contract item 3 for profit, and contract item 3 for overhead. Once you've entered your prices, then you can change the view from price to cost estimate. The cost estimate tab is where you're going to select the applicable cost codes 
and enter your cost values for this change order. In our case, we're going to go ahead and add three cost codes. You can either click on the down arrow and scroll through each of the cost codes, or you can start typing your cost codes if you happen to know them, and it will best fit for you. Once you hit the tab key, it pre-fills the description with whatever the description for that cost code is. Enter any quantities that you may have, in this case we'll just enter one, and then for this particular cost code we're going to go ahead and put in $5,000 worth of cost for labor, and then we'll add in the next two cost codes. So we're going to go ahead and add in excavation, one unit, $1,500, and finally, we're going to go ahead and add in asphalt for $1,000. You'll notice that as I'm tabbing, my cost base is also increasing line by line. Down below, you'll also see that there's a cost code column. If you don't have this, make sure and add it. Otherwise, your cost estimates won't get sent over to job cost. I went ahead and just chose to put this cost code 2050, my demolition, in as both for profit and overhead. You may have cost codes set up specifically for those items. Once all those are done, then go ahead and click the close button, and that will take you back to your change order's primary screen. When done, go ahead and click the save button, and you'll get potentially different windows that pop up. In my case, for example, this is a change order that I've already done some work on and put in estimate values, so it's telling me hey, I need to send the cost over as an estimate amount to job cost. If you want to go ahead and use the original date, go ahead and click OK. If you find out that you may have had earlier change requests that were created, you can always click on this Select Change Request button. It will only show you the applicable change request for your particular job. When you see the one that you want, click on the Change Request, and then click OK, and it will add it to the list. Same logic applies if you had multiple change requests and then you find out that one of them is not in the included a price. Then with your mouse, click on the row that you want to delete, right click and choose remove, and it takes that change request off. When you're done, make sure and click save so that it can update job cost and contracts as necessary. When you're completely done, go ahead and click on the close button and your change order is done. That's all you have to do. Thank you for watching this video and feel free to check out the rest of our training videos out at the Tag SWAT YouTube channel. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact us at Timberline at TeamTag.net or give us a call at the Tag office at 619-225-9322. Thank you and have a great day.